Hi there and welcome to another Atypical in Philosopher video. Today I'm going to talk philosophy and in particular something called epiphenomenalism. What is that? Well, I'll explain. This is an unscripted video, so I will be just uh, having a conversation with you, the viewer, about something I thought about the other night. Um, and this may all go completely wrong. <laughs> Or it may make a little bit of sense. But it's mainly a conversation about consciousness. So what is epiphenomenalism? Well, epiphenomenalism is this philosophical position that the mind supervenes on the brain. Supervene means depends upon entirely. So we have the, the, the mind-body problem. What explains the mind? My personal opinion is that if you have the non-conscious brain here, that the mind, the consciousness, depends upon, emerges from and therefore depends upon the, the physical structure of the brain. There are lots of uh, arguments that can defend this, such as sticking a fork into your eye socket and into your brain will affect your consciousness. Taking drugs, not having much sleep, in my case, multiple sclerosis, all these physical things can affect the, the consciousness that you experience. Now, epiphenomenalism is um, quite well analogized by, take for example, a, a boiling kettle. Steam is the natural byproduct of boiling a kettle. And in the same way, consciousness is arguably the natural byproduct of the machinations of the human brain. The particular structures and the way it is arranged will lead to an emergence of consciousness. And epiphenomenalism is this idea that this emergent consciousness is kind of re a reflection of the machinations of the non-conscious brain. But it doesn't actually drive what we do. It is merely a reflection. Think about someone riding a horse. So you're riding this horse, you're sitting on top of it, and the horse is going left. Why is the horse going left? Is the horse going left? Because you, as the rider, are driving it in a way that it goes left. Are you in control of the horse? Or is a horse in control and you feel you have this illusion that you're actually controlling the horse, but actually the horse is deciding where to go and you as a rider afterwards go, oh yeah, I made that happen. That, that's another analogy to explain epiphenomenalism where as is your conscious mind the, the, the jockey on the horse, but the ineffectual jockey. The jockey that thinks it's controlling where the horse is going, but actually the horse is doing all the controlling and the jockey is just along for the ride. Is our conscious brain along for the ride? So when, when we talk about the emergence of, of consciousness from our physical brain, is that emergence... That, it, that, that I would argue definitely depends upon the brain. So fork into the eye, take drugs, drink, um, you know, have MS. All these things that will affect the consciousness that show that, that, that you've got a supervenience going on. You've got a dependence upon the, the physical structures. Does, does that point towards epiphenomenalism? Do we... Does our conscious brain in some sense, reflect our non-conscious machinations rather than drive our non-conscious machinations. And what's interesting here is the very nature of the video I'm giving you, right? I am literally listening to my thoughts come out and then go, I'm going, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. In other words, my non-conscious, I'm not choosing any, any of my words. It's not like I have the entire dictionary of all the words I know. Right? And then each, each um, successive word I'm choosing from that, and I'm going to say that word next, and then that word, and then that. The sentences I've just spoken, this kind of 
meta conversation I'm having. These sentences I've just spoken, I haven't chosen those words individually. They've just come out. My non-conscious brain is throwing out these sentences that make grammatical sense, I hope. And my conscious brain is going, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, that, that's what I meant to say. But my, my conscious brain isn't choosing those words. Isn't, 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 so I think Sam Harris talked about this in, in one of his talks about free will, where he is like, you know, think about your favourite film. And it just pops into your head, right? If you didn't choose that film to pop into your head, your conscious brain didn't select from all your fa- all the films you've ever watched and go, doo, 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 that film, that that's my favourite favorite film. I'm going to select that one and throw that out into my mind. You know, or retrieve that into my mind because I am the mind, I'm the conscious mind. I didn't select that film and retrieve it into my mind. My non-conscious brain threw it out to me in response to what's your favourite film. In other words, your thought processes aren't driving your thought processes. Your thought processes are being driven by your non-conscious machinations. Whoa. So this is all kind of like, whoa. Now, I had an experience the other night that, that, that I think really, well, I'm going to ask you, arguably, I would say arguably, uh, evidence is epiphenomenalism. But does it? I don't know. Have a think. Or let your non-conscious brain have a think. And let your conscious brain go, yeah, I did that. Anyway, the other night, I was trying to think, now, bear in mind, I've got MS, multiple sclerosis, so sometimes I can't remember words or things that I really should be able to remember. And my conscious brain is like flailing to try and get that word or that idea. And the other, I, the other night, I was trying to think of the actor in The Truman Show, very famous actor. You, you, Dumb and Dumber, all these films. You know the actor, right? So I'm trying to think of that actor and uh, my conscious brain was going, come on, what's that actor? What's that actor? And then I was like, Kerry Elwes from The Princess Bride. Kerry Elwes. I was like, it's not Kerry Elwes. I know it's not Kerry Elwes. But, but I'm being thrown out this idea, Kerry Elwes. And then later I was like, it's Jim Carrey. Of course it's Jim Carrey. And I thought, wow, this is really interesting. Why? Did I first think of Kerry Elwes? What's going on there that when I tried to think of Jim Carrey, I thought of Kerry Elwes? And of course, there's a similarity between the first name of Kerry Elwes and Jim Carrey's surname. They're pretty much the same. What that meant is that my non-conscious brain must have known Jim Carrey. In order to, when I asked for Jim Carrey, known that here's a name that was similar to Jim Carrey. The Carrey and Carrey are very similar, just spelt differently. So Jim Carrey, I think they're spelt differently. Jim Carrey and Carrey Elwes have that similarity. And so I asked for for Jim Carrey, but my non-conscious brain throws out... Or, or my conscious brain is only able to access Carrie Elwes. But there's a knowledge that goes deeper that, that must have known I wanted Jim Carrey in order to know the similarity between Jim Carrey and Carrie Elwes to then somehow throw out Carrie Elwes. So there's some kind of filing system that's going on there that my conscious brain wants access to but it can't delve in there and get the right one otherwise it'd get the right one it's being thrown out ideas and there's some there's some kind of error going on in that in that in that finding system and maybe it's my multiple sclerosis that's messing around with those um with those you know algorithms and algorithms and that finding system such that I demand an answer and I get this related incorrect answer. And it, and it, it makes me go, is that, is that evidence of epiphenomenalism? Whereby, you know, 
I'm the thinking that's being done and the filing and the processing throws out the steam that is my consciousness uh, and 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 my consciousness isn't really able to affect that which comes out just you know that I had the non-conscious brain that's doing all this f filing and processing here and the consciousness here goes I want this answer give me an answer and it goes ah I know the answer but there's this other thing that's really similar and something's getting in the way from giving me the, the answer that I kind of know because it's filed in here under Carey, under words that sound like Carey. And I've got Mary and Harry and all these other things. And, and I know that you want Jim Carey, but here's Carey Elwes and throws out this, this incorrect answer. And my non-conscious brain and my conscious brain there's some kind of recognition going on. Maybe there's a feedback loop where it goes, oh, I know that's not right, but you've given me a, a, a name that's really, really similar. So you've got this consciousness and then you've got this kind of like this thing that's happening between consciousness and non-consciousness, possibly like my MS or being tired or whatever that, that, that gets in the way of an accurate, either an accurate computation here or or a, a relationship between here and here that that gets messed up so the messaging system gets gets screwed up but anyway like i think it's really interesting i think epiphenomenalism is an interesting idea especially when you think about the selection of words i've just been speaking almost non-stop right and i haven't selected any one of those words i haven't consciously selected a single word those words have come out of my mouth and out of my brain and my consciousness is hearing them afterwards and gone yeah I agree with that <laughs> because it's almost as if there's a there's a, a separate conscious reflectional thought and the initial kind of non-conscious thought such that it comes out and and th this consciousness kind of sanctions it yeah yeah or 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 just doesn't even sanction it because it's out before it gets to veto it. So it comes out and then the conscious brain goes, yeah, nice. I like what you did there. Or like, bang, I thought of the wrong words or whatever. But it but it but it, this isn't driving this. This is not driving this. And and then you can start thinking about well, well how about well, surely it drove it because I wanted to find. So is it my conscious brain? that wanted to find the actor who was in the Truman Show. Wanted to find that name. So was it the fact that the, not, the, the consciousness went, who, who was the actor in the Truman Show? And then delves into here. So maybe this is driving what's going on in here because it's saying, I demand the actor of the Truman Show, you find it for me, non-conscious brain. And then the non-conscious brain does this calculation and processing and then throws out the incorrect answer. And then the consciousness goes, no, that's wrong. So maybe it is driving it. But then the epiphenomenalist would say that I wanted the name of the actor in the Truman Show was itself a desire from here that was reflected out to here that then seems like it's then asking back into here who that actor is for the for here to throw it back out to here to say it was Carrie Elwes. And then later say, no, it wasn't. It was Jim Carrey. Is it is there a delving in and then a throwing out, or is this all just the steam that that that's boiling off the 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 boiling water of of the brain's machinations? So that that even the question is itself an emergent question from the non-conscious brain. Is itself a question that the non-conscious brain it hears it sees something about the Truman Show or hears something in conversation about the Truman Show. And, and then and then goes, oh, act of the Truman Show. And then the consciousness goes, oh, act of the Truman Show. But actually it's emerged from, from, the, from a kind of synapse processing going on here that, that manifests itself in a, in a question in my, in my conscious brain. But actually the question is here, this is just a reflection. So here goes out to consciousness, it says, question. And then the answer's in here, so it goes back in here. 
And then here throws out an answer and he goes, answer. And then here goes, wrong answer. Goes back in, right answer. But actually all of this was taking place in the non-conscious brain. And the conscious brain was a merely a, re a later reflection, a chronologically later reflection of what was going on in here. It's the jockey on the horse that thinks it's it's riding the horse, it's driving the horse into different directions and places, but actually the horse is deciding where to go. And, and the control of the rider is merely an illusion. Something to think about. I think that's a fascinating area of discussion. I think epiphenomenalism is fascinating and there are arguments for and against it. Um, and I, I, you know, I advise the, the viewer here to go and, and look into it if you're interested. But I, I would start with the, with the foundation that there is a, a supervenience of the mind on the brain. And I think we can show that quite conclusively. There are lots of arguments to show that, that this depends on this, the evolution of the brain, the development of the brain through life affecting your consciousness through life. My consciousness as a blastocyst, non-existent, through to a baby, through to a, a, an infant, through to a child. Again, that, the, the consciousness is, is changing as the brain develops. And then sticking a fork into your eye, taking drugs, not having much sleep, having a condition, all of these things affect the consciousness which seems to imply that the non-conscious brain drives the consciousness. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit that bell, all the things that proper YouTubers say. And question everything, including your own thoughts. Think about thinking. Think about what takes place for you to think about anything. When you're having a conversation with someone, are you choosing those words or are you listening to those words? When someone asks you a question, how do you get the answer? Do, how much of a, of a part does your conscious brain play in, in delivering the answer? What's your favourite colour? Red. Did I think about it? Is that, who's giving that answer? And you get this idea that there's almost two two entities going on here there's your conscious entity and there's your non-conscious entity You're almost like two people who when i say who's delivering the answer well it's all me it's just different aspects of me but who's doing the driving you know who's your favorite actor where do you go on holiday last how much how much how much of that thinking is done by your conscious brain how much is done by the non-conscious brain, especially since those memories are, are actually within the synapses of your uh, and the neurons of your of your of your brain. You know who's in control. I think that's fascinating. Anyway, question everything. Take care. Stay safe. Mm -hmm.